hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. In this uh, short lecture, we will look at uh, some applications of uh, the Poisson random variable in the sense of, you know, where it shows up, uh, you know, in, in, in some, in, in totally different unusual circumstances, you will suddenly come across the Poisson random variable. It's, it's very common and it applies in a certain nice scenario and I thought it's a, it's a nice opportunity to, you know, go back to a very practical sort of uh, uh, lecture where we talk about some data, uh, look at a couple of uh, types of data and show how uh, this Poisson random variable seems to be a very natural and random fit. Uh, if, you, if you go back and rewind to one of the earlier lectures, we spoke about how statistics is a way of, uh, you know, explaining random like phenomenon uh, that appear, uh, you know, in, in various uh, natural settings and we will look at two such settings and we will try and explain uh, one such phenomenon, okay. And the Poisson random variable is sort of at the heart of it, okay. So, let us get started. Uh, so, so quite often we have this phenomenon uh, that we have events occurring over a period of time and they seem to occur at random, right. So, suddenly something will happen and then uh, something else will happen like that. So, uh, the same event, so to speak, you know. So, it keeps happening over a period of time at uh, the exact time it appears is probably random, but one can say a lot about the patterns. One pattern you can say a lot about is the average number of uh, people who arrived at a certain time or average number of events that happened over a certain time. So, I am giving you a few examples here. Let us, let us uh, firm up our mind with a few examples and then talk more specifics. So, let us say you have a booking counter like in a, in a movie theater or, uh, or you know railway booking counter or you know bank, uh, you know some the teller in the bank waiting for a queue, etc. Any place where you have to queue up uh, and, and you, you want to sort of think you know how often uh, the, the, you want to say something about the queue length, right. So, you want to see how the queue picks up, you know, when people come. And this arrival of a person into a queue, wherever that queue is, is sort of like a random occurrence, right. So, we do not know ahead of time when exactly somebody is going to walk into a queue. Now, this setting shows up in so many places. So, supposing, you know, so many unusual ways in which the same thing happens. So, so a few more things have been put up there. You are running a website and you want to see when people come and access uh, the content of your website, right. So, now again there is uh, some randomness there in the arrival, right. Uh, and and uh, that seems to be, you know, there are so many different people who can decide to check out your website on a particular day. You do not know ahead of time who is going to come when. Uh, there is a certain random uh, phenomenon going on here. There is few more things about emission of a particle, the radioactive decay. So, there is lots of randomness in there. It is difficult to know exactly where every particles, every you know, uh, state is and all that and which one is going to come off and then and the rate at which it comes and all that is an interesting phenomenon to measure, right. So, radioactive decay is very important. And another interesting thing is meteorite entering Earth's atmosphere, right. There are so many of these small objects floating around in space. When exactly do they cross paths with Earth and how do they enter, etc., etc. It, it seems like, you know, this one after the other it would come and uh, it's it's not clear when that would come in and you can push this to so many other things i mean it's it's this queuing of you know random arrivals into a queue uh, you know the queue may be you know atmosphere or something but you know, it's different in different places but this phenomenon of uh, you know there is a queue in some sense or uh, you know and then people are arriving into that at random uh, times is, is, is very, very common, you know, you, you have a uh, traffic signal, cars come at random times in some sense, uh, everything else, you know, so, so many applications. So, quite often in many of these examples, uh, a couple of things are common, okay. So, these are, uh, th these are two points here, these are very crucial and uh, quite often these uh, conditions are satisfied. One is, uh, you can assume a certain arrival rate, okay. Uh, maybe that arrival rate will vary over time. Okay, so, at sometimes the arrival rate may be larger, some other times it may be uh, smaller, but generally over large periods of time, you may be able to assume that the arrival rate is uh, fixed. Like for instance, meteorites entering the Earth's atmosphere, it is okay to assume the number of meteorites uh, per certain unit of time, let us say per month or per day or per year or something, is probably, uh, you know, it is easy to think, of, imagine some, some arrival rate, okay. Same thing with uh, other type of uh, phenomenon that I spoke about just now, uh, radioactive decay, there is like an average emission rate, you can think of people coming into a queue, now that depends on the time of the day and whether it is uh, various uh, scenarios, but maybe over a long enough period of time you can assume the arrival rate is fixed, okay. Now, here comes the next uh, assumption or next, uh, next uh, 
make, make the assumption that you want to hold true, uh, that one is that supposing one person has come, one arrival has happened, one, one event has occurred, right? The time you have to wait for the next event, right, could be assumed to be independent of uh, what has happened in the past. Okay? In some sense, the phenomenon uh, of arrival of a new event or occurrence of a new event and, and that you are tracking in this way is not dependent on the past of what you observe. Right? That is uh, quite reasonable in many cases. I mean, if, if you are if running a website, you want to see how, uh, what is the time for the next person comes in. Uh, it is not like the same person is coming back again and again or people are waiting in a queue to come into your website. Right? They, they have access to the machine from all over the place. So, the scenario is similar even after so many people have come, right? maybe. Right? So, these are uh, interesting assumptions. So, it turns out uh, under these two assumptions, if you fix a certain period of time and then look at how many arrivals will happen, that will be a Poisson random variable. And it is a, it's a very interesting fact and I will not prove or anything like that, but this is, uh, this, this hopefully gives you a sense of why the Poisson random variable shows up all over the place, right. So, this is the reason. So, if, if you have, if you are tracking arrivals or any such event, you are tracking events over a period of time and they seem to occur randomly, but their arrival rate is fixed and once something, uh, one, once that arrival happens, the time you have to wait for the next arrival is independent of all that happened in the past. Under these scenarios, the number of arrivals over a period of time ends up being a Poisson random variable. So, now why is number of arrivals over a period of time important? Uh, you may be managing a queue, right? I mean, as in, in your bank, you may be running a bank, right, let us say. And then you have to decide how, how long the queue could be or maybe you open a counter if the queue goes too long. So, you really want to know over a, over a certain time how much can the queue build up, right? So, you want to build up theories like this and, uh, you know, we, we are famous for queues. We are a country where queues are uh, all over the place. You, you only have to go to this uh, temple called Tirupati nearby to know how complicated a queue they maintain, okay? So, maintaining queues in this country is a big problem, right? So, so this Poisson random variable is going to show up uh, again and again when you think of queues and uh, this is the reason why, okay? So, I am going to give you a couple of examples. I'll, I'll, I gathered some data on radioactive decay and uh, the meteorites entering the atmosphere, uh, two very different sort of events and the Poisson will show up in, <coughs> in both places. So, let us see how to do uh, things like this, uh, you know, take, take data and try and fit uh, some random variable into it. We will look at this in more detail later, but I will just show you some preliminary examples of how such things look. So, first you need to look at the data and uh, here is data on radioactive decay, decay of a particle of, of, of uh, I mean alpha particles being emitted by radioactive decay, okay. So, uh, there is three things I have put down here. Uh, the first of all, uh, there is a time interval of 7.5 seconds over which you are counting uh, how many particles came. There are 2608 such time intervals over which somebody has counted the number of particles and they saw that out of this 2608, 57 uh, time intervals in during 57 time intervals, no particles were emitted, zero particles were emitted. And 203 other time intervals, exactly one particle was emitted, okay. So, once again remember, there is this time slot of 7.5 seconds and you have uh, 2608 such different time slots and somebody measured how many alpha particles are coming out of using some, you know, radiation counter or something, okay. So, uh, and then they saw that out of this 2608, in 57 time intervals, no particle came. In 203, one particle came. 383, two particle came all the way off to 16 such time intervals when 10 particles were emitted, okay. So, now we can make a fraction out of this number of times. So, I take 57 divided by 2608, I get a fraction 0 0.022. This is almost as if, this is like the probability like 0 0.022 is the probability that no particles are emitted in a 7.5 second interval, isn't it? Then 203 you divide by 2608, this is sort of like the probability 0 0.078 is the probability that one particle is emitted in a time interval of 7.5 seconds. This is a reasonable way to uh, do probability and, and, and this is how uh, we come up with these fractions, okay? So, emission rate, okay, the average number of particles that are emitted over a you know, you keep a large enough window, the total number of particles divided by 2608, isn't it? That is the uh, total number of, uh, that is sort of like the average and that works out to some 3.8673, okay? So, that is the emission rate, okay? Per unit time, in some sense, you expect 3.8673 emissions to occur, okay? So, this is again based on the data, I just added up all of them and divided by 
2608. Okay. So, uh, so it's, it's sort of also reasonable to assume the time of next emission is independent of the past. Uh, this is big enough uh, sample maybe you have and too many things happen there. So, you do not have to worry about the past. Okay. So, now what is the Poisson model now? Uh, you remember the Poisson PMF is uh, you know it takes integer values k and probability is that it takes an integer value k is this e power minus lambda lambda power k by k factorial. So now we are going to suppose that this fraction that I have here obeys the Poisson PMF. It sort of looks like a Poisson PMF. It won't be exact but maybe close enough to it. So how do I fit it in some sense? I find this lambda and then I plug in this k there. Say probability that number of particles equals k is e power minus lambda lambda power k by k factor. Okay, that's the Poisson model for emission. Okay, so if the fraction that I've seen from the data is close enough to this Poisson, right? This Poisson PMF, then we can sort of say that you know maybe this follows the Poisson random variable. Okay, that's sort of like a rough way to see it. But are, are, are these two things close? How do you assess all that? Uh, all that is there's lots of statistics in in uh, in that kind of work. Uh, but let us just do like you know first order, we will just plot it and see how it is, right. So, that is one way of quickly visually checking that is this a viable model and, and you see it seems quite viable, is not it? You see that the you know the blue uh, lines are actually the fractions that I have plotted and the red crosses are the Poisson uh, PMF value, right. The PMF value you got from e power minus lambda lambda par k by k factorial, that is the red value and the blue is the actual fraction. So, look, look at the match, it is quite good, is not it? So, this is uh, one uh, simple example where I have shown you this Poisson fit uh, to a data that comes from emissions of, uh, of a radioactive uh, uh, object, okay. So, that is radioactive decay. You can repeat the same for what are called fireballs or uh, meteorites entering the atmosphere. You, you, if you look at uh, data for 276 months uh, from a period 1994 to 2016, uh, once again, uh, this data says in uh, 24 of these months, no fireballs entered the atmosphere. In 54 of these months, of these 276 months, exactly one fireball uh, showed up in the atmosphere and so on till in one month, 10 fireballs showed up. Once again, I can do fractions uh, to count, uh, you know, sort of to see the probability of how many, you know, what is the probability that no fireballs will show up in a month, okay. So for that I just divide 24 by 2, 276, okay. So I, I do that, I get this uh, fraction, okay. Once again we can do arrival rate, we get 2.5217 as the arrival rate here and you can sort of imagine the time of, I put a time of next emission, the next arrival, I'm sorry. So it is also very reasonable that you can say a time of next arrival is independent of the past, right. So it does not seem, uh, I mean it seems totally uh, reasonable. Uh, once again the Poisson fit as Poisson model is going to be so, probability that the number of fireballs equals k, fireball, fireballs that uh, show up in a month, right, that is equals k is e power minus lambda lambda power k by k factorial and we expect the fraction to be close to the, to the Poisson PMF, okay, then you have a good fit, okay. So, once again I want, I want, to, I want you to notice the contrast between the two things, one is radioactive decay of, uh, you know, some, from some element, here is meteorites entering the atmosphere. Okay. And there is this common thing of the arrival rate and the time of next arrival being independent and magically that gives you the same fit, the same kind of PMF uh, for this number. Once again remember this is probability that number of fireballs in a month that you see in a month is equal to k is I am expecting it to be a Poisson fit. And let us see how good is this fit. Once again we make this plot of uh, you know the fraction and the Poisson PMF. I mean it is maybe off here and there a little bit but generally the fit is uh, quite reasonable and uh, okay, okay. So, so, uh, so you know people talk about uh, Newton's explanation of gravity and how it fits, uh, you know, the apple falling down from the tree and the planetary motion. So, here is uh, an example where you have this, uh, you know, statistical phenomenon explained with the Poisson random variable and it fits to a radioactive element on earth and as well as meteorites that enter the atmosphere, okay, right. So, maybe statistics is not too bad after all for explaining you know random like phenomenon uh, that happen in the universe right great so let's uh, that's the conclusion of this lecture uh, hopefully we'll see more such examples uh, hopefully uh, for many other examples also we'll find nice models like this and see how we can uh, use them in making uh,
predictions and other inferences. So, that concludes the lecture. Uh, thank you very much.